So now you know that everything is uh, not only being broadcast to the people, uh, it is being recorded for, I don't know, posterity, the time capsule. What, what, what is it that we do here on the Get Fact Harder major hi Yona? Well, you see, whereas the weekend uh, forensic delving, we'll call it, uh, the main show with Richard and Tony and LD and friends uh, and the so many working behind the scenes there uh, with the engineering and keeping the whole show going. And, you know, the, everyone loves the marathon six to eight hour sessions, you know, going over all the different clips and everything. Uh, Whereas Get Fact Harder is where we hone in on the most salient points and thrust until it busts into your consciousness. That's the whole point of Get Fact Harder, to keep reminding you of all the things that are all of a sudden just getting lost beneath the headlines, you know, with all due respect to the, what are we up to now? Nine or 10,000 dead Palestinians in Gaza Strip alone. Uh, oh, I haven't and been keeping I think count. over 3,200 dead kids in the Gaza Strip alone. But again, everyone, rightfully so, focusing on the carpet bombing of Gaza and most recently the Jebaliya refugee camp. But I want to turn everyone's attention to the West Bank and Ramallah and oh, yeah. Sheikh Jarrah and East Bethlehem because at the same, after the, uh, why don't we call it 07, right? Like you got J6? And we'll call it, can we go, can we go with the 07? I mean, can we just not do that? Like any of that? Can we not compare it to like other things and like, can we just not make a big deal out of it? Because oh, it really wasn't that I, big I a forgot. deal. I forgot. I, you know, I, you would have thought it would have been beaten into my head by now. It's Israel's 911. So, anyways. Oh my God. Okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> well, there are parallels, you know, false flags, false flags. But, anyways, um, you know, I, mean, I, I would like to think that Urban Moving Systems was a Mossad cutout in the same way that. Mossad began funding the Muslim Brotherhood of uh, Palestine to, mm. you know, uh, you know, give a little bit of competition to their uh, non-homie Yasser Arafat and his um, whole Palestinian liberation organization. But nonetheless, it's the collective punishment that continues to be meted out against Palestinians not in the Gaza Strip. For example... I think there's been about almost 4,000 women and children that have been just put into what's called administrative detention, taken from the West Bank communities. What's that mean? Um, administrative detention in Israel is kind of like, uh, to put it in American terms, it would be like a Guantanamo detention, where you haven't yet been charged with a crime because they haven't yet thought up anything that right. you may have ah, it doesn't matter just sit right. there and wait you have no court date yeah. you have no lawyer you don't get to call home um the difference would be that at least in guantanamo bay you get cock meat every day as harold and kumar let us know and they're um uh what was that uh harold and kumar go to guantanamo right did they right, do? The, the, did they do a the Guantanamo? To, yeah, yeah, that was the sequel to Harold and Kumar. Oh shit, Kumar that's right, they Castle. did. Harold I don't think Kumar I saw that one. Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. Um, but thanks to them, we learned that yes, in fact, um, we can't even call them inmates because you know inmates have rights. <laughs> They're detainees, and so detainees. You know, they may never have a lawyer or ever see court. And, you know, it's, you know, who needs a Magna Carta or habeas corpus anyways? So, uh, you know, uh, again, the shit that's been, you know, there's been 
an acceleration of the demolition of homes in Sheikh Jarrah in East Jerusalem, uh, because Jerusalem is supposed to be the shared capital of the two state solution. And the, the whole, the only reason I went into this thing was everyone has been talking about this nonstop, as they should. It's kind of a big deal to have an ongoing, major, throbbing, raging boner of a war genocide going on. But, I guess. Oh. you know, really. There's basically, Palestine is already broken into three pieces. Okay, that Gaza, the, the, At the least. Gaza Strip. Uh, and then you have East Jerusalem. And then you have the West Bank, which, air quotes, is the third piece, as it were. But the West Bank itself has been cut up into a million little pieces that don't even touch each other. Because they're separated by like brand new freeways with on ramps and off ramps, but only for settlers. Palestinians are not allowed to use those roads. Um, they get to use the one lane gravel road that's like a frontage road next to the freeway. Um, and then to travel anywhere within the West Bank, there are all these checkpoints and walls. And so after Otha, oh, I almost did it, but a cop. After the um, paragliding jihadi varmints <laughs> with their kippiyas and everything descended upon the peaceful rays right on the border fence that, you know, happened, just happened to have been moved from its previously scheduled stage and everything. And the IDF decided, uh, hey guys, we're going to move your peace rays. Right over here against the fence, mm -hmm. eight hours before showtime begins. But don't worry, we'll be in our military base half a click. I'm sorry, kilometer, half a, but no, we got to use imperial units on here. Uh, me school base, senor. Um, so mm -hmm. we're talking less than half a mile, okay? Down the road is the the IDF base, that's the military force of the Zionist state, stands for inch dick force. Um, and, and they're very angry about it. Um, <clears throat> they try to make up for it by sniping children in playgrounds from two miles away, which is their military strength. You know, when they get into close quarters, as you'll hear on Israeli state radio and other media, and when the IDF's all close in, because it's an inch dick force, when they all start peeing, they, there's not even enough wand to even steer that thing. And then they all just wet each other in the crossfire. Um, that's kind of what happened a lot in, in many ways. Uh, and then there's this Hannibal so, Doctrine and Samson Doctrine. You know what? I'm ready to move on. I mean, in all due respect, you know, people can look at my musical repertoire. I've, I've made five songs yeah. about Palestinian people. People know where the Yona stands. This isn't an instant issue for the Yoda. My God, my first Palestine song, Philistine Aside, I made in 2003. It's 2020, fucking 20 years ago, man. You know, I, I'm literally going to put together an album called Palace Stein. See what I did there? Palace, like, like P A L A C E, and then S T E I N with big uh, uh, <sighs> Star of David. Palace hyphen Stein oh, because it used to be Palestine get, but you now should get Alex Stein to to do like a cameo in the yes. song Palestine yes. featuring yes. Alex, Alex Stein. Stein but we can make that happen. and it'll be we, funny because he's a Jew yeah we can make that happen we can make that happen um and, you know, anyways, I've got these six different songs. Most recently, with Dead Fella's help, uh, a.k.a. Moen. Uh, yeah. he we just lost mastering. YouTube, by the way. Yeah. Um, he did all the, the mastering on my latest uh, Palestine song, Phosphorus Eyes. And I shared that with his buddy, uh, Omar, who actually lives uh, in a 
vibrant cosmopolitan city down there in the Mid-East. Shout out to Tyrants. Uh, that would be Riyadh. Uh, and so, of course, you know, when I was last time I was talking to Omar, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Riyadh uh, is the capital of the, um, I didn't say it was a democracy. yet. It's not. It's the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. It's ruled by Mohammed bin Salman, the, the crown prince uh, of the royal Saud family. So anyway, so I'm talking to my buddy, uh, our mutual friend, Ed Bell and Omar. I don't know I'm talking about that. And I was like, you know, man, it's got to be pretty cool. You know, like, there's got to be things to do. It's like, Riyadh. He's like, oh, yeah, there's a great outdoor scene. And I was like, and y'all have street parks? Like, yeah, yeah. And y'all have fashion stands? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can get, like, pistachio treats and blah, 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 and bananas. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. And y'all got the ice cream? Oh, yeah, we got the ice cream. It's like, so, um, you know, I was wondering, Omar, because I kind of keep up with um, some of the outdoor events in Riyadh. Like, for example, apparently every weekend, the dude with the black uh, sash across his face and the big, big sword that um, choppy choppies the heads, heads off when they do their outdoor public executions. Um, you know, I'm not oh, they still have that. Topic, but, you know, like, oh, they still have, wow. like... They I'm still jealous. have the like, concession stands. I'm so and, like, jealous right now. And so, anyways, you know, I'm like trying to move. I'm trying to gloss it over in this conversation because I want to. I'm trying to laser focus on the pistachio ice cream drizzle. That's how. That's how we got through this tricky subject. Because I was wow. like, so, so you know, they're they're, they're still doing the outdoor. What? It's like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With the ice cream, like, you can still get the pistachio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's kind of gruesome, but, yeah, the ice cream's great. Yes! Yes! Yes, and yes. And, and to answer your question, yes. Yes. Nice. Uh, and I did not say it was a democracy. No, did you did not. not. You did not at all. But, um, you know what, but before I leave uh, the subject, geez, man, I, here we are back with episode four of Get Back Harder. Folks, three, with, three, uh, don't get ahead of oh, yourself now. Episode three. Oh, I recorded episode three at the hospital. We'll have to do the editing on that. <laughs> episode three is the actual birth footage and stuff. Oh, but good Lord. We gotta, no, no, we that doesn't that go on the deal. channel. No. Mm -mm. Um. But anyway, we will so, lose subscribers. People will make us give them money. They'll, you know there'll what? be lawsuits. No, we can't do that. We may, we might just never even release episode three, and that'll just fuck with people even harder. We can what make the it the top episode subscription one, tier a million yeah. dollars a year, and you get the birth footage. And you get the missing episode three that's driving everybody crazy because right. it just skipped from two to four. Right, yeah. and the missing uh, new music <laughs> potluck episode too. We'll, That's right. We'll throw that in there as a bonus. That's right. That, that, you're, you're talking about the one that you recorded before you hit Eagle Pass. Sure. <laughs> yeah. when, when you were still on the uh, on the mojito side, we'll say. Yes. Yes, so on anyways, the less expensive uh, side of the southern border. Yeah, expensive. Yeah, that, that's why I was going to say, before I pirouette out of uh, the Gulf altogether, of course, uh, and although I do want to say something about the really distasteful neon Vegas-style makeover of the Kabla and the holy city of Mecca, moving on, moving on, because as, I, as, as it turns out, when I brought that up, every Muslim I brought that up with, they all agree. They're like, yeah, it's not really, it's really, it, it's just wrong. Mm -hmm. what, what, what the kingdom has done around the holy sites with the neon and the stripper poles and the Vegas treatment, it's really untasteful. But I mean, I, I'm wow. just trying to imagine if they had stripper poles in the Vatican, in, you know, in St. Peter's, 
Basilica right there in, you know, La Chita del Vaticano in the middle of fucking Rome, you know, and do it up with the neon and everything. Um, don't you think they could, like, have harnesses or something in case the altar boys fall off the poles or something? But, um, yeah, that would just be distasteful, really. I mean. I, I think they're working towards that. <laughs> I think they are. They, it's, you got to take the people slowly in that direction, right? You can't just well, in order, you know, in order to keep people in the church, them. you're going to have to right. jazz it up a little bit, right? You're going to have to spice right. things up, you know, get some drop down screens in the churches. Well, but remember, if, if you're going to put in poles for the altar boys, don't forget the safety harness. You know, you don't want an altar boy to fall off there. And then, what are you going to do during communion? Who's going to hold the little plate under their mouths when they're getting the, right. you know, because you got your believers walking up to the priest and their tongues out, you know, so the altar boy's got to like catch the crumbs because you don't want any body of Christ crumbs hitting the floor, Drizzle. It's sacrilege, man. Sacrilege. Uh, look, you're making me destroy the Arabia. equipment already. We're not even 20 minutes into this. Come on. That's pace how we we got to pace, Arabia. pace. Pays. And, and, and as we curve and and turn up the yes. Red Sea and head back toward Israel, like a Yemeni, um, I guess a Yemeni slingshot projectile that's been flung from Sanaa, Yemen, mm, or Lebanon, all the way to Tel Aviv, yeah, because uh, their slingshots have a range of over six hundred nautical air miles. Um, yeah. So beware, Israel. Yemen has officially declared war. Yes. Against Israel. But to be fair, the United Arab Emirates and the IDF, yes, our favorite inch stick force, they jointly <laughs> invaded and occupied Yemen's island of Socotra about two and a half years ago. And so if you've ever seen pictures of like the trees and the plants that are on the island of Socotra, Literally looks like a Star Wars set. Oh, wow. I mean, it, you look at any picture of Socotra, immediately that song starts playing. You, you know, it's... Yeah, yeah. Cantina. Well, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that, right? Because I was talking with uh, Media Monarchy member Kanoko a couple of nights ago. He's a former U.S. military veteran. And he was basically telling me the same thing, that when he was serving, which I believe was in the last 10 years or so, maybe even more uh, time back than that, but they were uh, trying to introduce new uniforms into the service, right? And he's he said what they were bringing in was like a cross between what you would see on the bridge of the Death Star in Star Wars, right? Like the 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 dress gray uniforms that they would wear and something that, you know, a cross between that and something you might see on like a uh, Nazi back in the 1930s. Kind of cross between those two things was apparently the aesthetic that they were going for at that time, even. A little bit of Prussian, a little bit of Saturnalia. Mm. Are you listening, Hugo Boss? Make it happen. Chop, chop. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of chop, chop, yes, as we circle and head back up the Red Sea there. Well, I speaking would be of chop, to... chop, hold up, hold up, because we, uh -oh. we can't leave the Red Sea just quite yet. I don't know if you know about this, because, again, you've been preoccupied for a little while. Right. right, and we, we will get to the twins. I will fill everybody in on that, but we got to save the best for last. Okay, I agree with you on that. All right, so it came out late today, and today being November 2nd, 2023. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. It came out just a few hours before we went on the air that apparently there is... Uh, somebody associated with either Iran or Hezbollah who is due to give a speech at the UN on Friday and Hezbollah has given 
an ultimatum to the United States to figure out a peaceful solution to what's going on in Gaza right now by the time that this dude gives his speech or uh, I guess all hell's going to break loose. Hmm. When I, when I hear uh, Hezbollah, I always hear has balls. Because, you know, I mean, Hassan Nasrallah gives no fucks. Um, and bear in mind that uh, Lebanon, or uh, I'm sorry, as the British would say, Lebanon, um, <laughs> Lebanon uh, has been repeatedly shelled and uh, invaded by the Israelis. Um, some questions about that recent hyperbaric explosion in uh, Beirut. Uh, but of course, Israel is still occupying part of southern Lebanon illegally there at um, Shabbat Farms, I believe it is called. Uh, and then, you know, right where uh, Lebanon and Syria meet, uh, then you have all of the uh, that rich area uh, with um, shale oil and gas and uh, lots of uh, spring waters there. Uh, it's called the, um, what did they rename? Oh, yeah, it's called Trump Heights now. Trump Heights. It, is that really the name? To, it used to be called the Golan Heights, you fools. It, it's Trump oh. Heights now. Yeah, Just like it's not me. Turkey anymore, it's Turkey. Yeah. Right. Turkey. Yeah. With, with the little dot. Turkey, yeah. Turkey, yeah. And it's still Istanbul, though. It's still Istanbul and Ankara, but it's now Istanbul, Turkey, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, let's um, see. They and, might um, be giants. Come up with a song from that garbage. And, and shout out to my buddy right. in Istanbul, Krosny, um, over there, uh, hanging out a lot with the, with the tea lavish, with the greater back of bondages there. Because I was talking to him last night about... Um, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who's the president of uh, Turkey and um, self-described uh, new sultan of the new Ottoman Empire. Uh, and uh, he was uh, really uh, given some harsh, harsh words to Israel, you know, calling out the fact that um, you really shouldn't carpet bomb and kill thousands of civilians at a time. Uh Right. But, you know, uh, as Crosney kept pointing out to me, he keeps helping Israel behind the back. And so it's all just bluster and pander and pablum to the public. And I said, well, in response, I said, well, obviously, if he doesn't really feel that way, but yet he's motivated to say that type of shit in pub to the uh, Turkish public, then obviously there's so much public sentiment in mm -hmm. Turkey that he's under pressure. To not just sound like a complete jackass, I'm <clears throat> Joe Biden, um, you know, and then all of a sudden your Arab of Arab American vote goes from like fifty nine and a half percent to like seventeen percent or something, poof, and it's gone. Um, <laughs> there went your supposed margin. Um, but don't yeah. worry, don't worry, Democrats, don't worry. We're gonna have mail in ballots. It's gonna be fine. Might take till February or March of next year to, to you know. Might not be till April of 2025, but eventually they'll get all those mail-in ballots counted behind closed drapes, and um, our vibrant democracy will have another regime military installed. I mean, I'm, we'll have another uh, we'll peaceful see. transfer of power in our vibrant. No democracy. guarantee that that's what's going to happen, but you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Um, meanwhile, let's see. So we hit Yemen. We hit. Um, there was something going on with the um, Qataris. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, well, it turns out a lot of people, when they want to find out what the Arabic view is, they think that the Arabic view is Al Jazeera. But hmm. Al Jazeera is broadcast from its headquarters in Ahmadina Doha, in the city of Doha. In, hmm. in Qatar, and, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and just one note, <clears throat> linguistic note there uh, for those that may be wondering. Yona, is it Qatar or Qatar? Because it's spelled like it's Qatar in English. Uh, well, it turns out in, in Arabic, it's with tall. Qaf, tall, and ra. So it would be Qatar, Qatar, mm-hmm. Qatar in the throat, Qatar, which sounds like Qatar. Like, right. like my, I, got, I had this girlfriend one time. I kind of had to dump her because, <laughs> you know, you could see on both of her wrists and everything. She was a cutter. It was, it was weird. Freaked me out. Bleeding all the time. You know? No, different, yeah. different kind of cutter. Get the self care, girl, and you know, get some help. Yeah. And um, don't call me. Okay. So anyway, so that's uh, and and Qatar was only ever said by English speakers that were just butchering. Cutter. It, it's actually Cutter. So, um, turns out Cutter is basically the turd cutter of the Gulf states mm. in that it's just a client shit for the United States. Kind of like Kuwait is, is a British client state. Or, or know, kind um, of, um, kind of like Delaware. Yeah. Yeah. Very much like Delaware. Yeah. In fact. Very much like Delaware. And then um, Bahrain would be like Salisbury in mm-hmm. Comico County, Maryland. Because, you know, it turns out there are Maryland twerps on the other side of the Chesapeake Bay there. Because, I mean, who hasn't been to Ocean That's City, true. Maryland? Yeah. Great boardwalk there. Great boardwalk. Great oh, place yeah. for, for mess and DJs. Too. So, um, you know, and, and it's just a short ferry ride to the Jersey Shore. Mm, 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 no, mm. So, no, thank um, you. No, I'm good. No. Nope. Uh, so Mm-mm. let's see. Nope. Meanwhile, in case you forgot, at Al Tomf, at Adar Azur, and at Hasake, just to name three of the major U.S. <laughs> military bases that are in eastern Syria yeah. at the border crossing, right? Because at Deir Azur, where you have, that's where, like, Jordan and Iraq and Syria, like, touch with a three-way corner. What, what? And then <clears throat> al Tanf is down there. That's the main... Yeah. Wait a minute. Because the United hold, States hold on, hold on, is hold on, illegally hold on, occupied. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh-huh. I have a question. Yeah. All right. Uh, There's many ducks. We are not. <clears throat> we are not military allies with Syria, correct? No, we're not, and we keep telling Bashar Assad we're going to kill him, and he can eat a dick. Okay. Yeah. And and yeah, we have like. we have military bases in Syria. Three of them. How does that work? Well, the best. Like, do we have is- military bases in North Korea? Do we have military bases in China? Do we have military bases in Russia? Well, we had all these bases in Iraq, but the Iraqis kept attacking them, like the ones in Mosul and Tikrit, and. So what? Um, they just moved everybody to Syria. Yeah. But don't worry, they're still within range of all of Iran's weapons. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so moving on. Yeah, as long I as we, we got the, the uh, important I, stuff we, we taken care of. We made that point. That point was made. That point was made. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm about ready to do the choo-choos, your supply chain. But first. Oh, yeah. But first. Uh, uh-oh. We, we got to finish this uh, uh, round in the Middle East. Um, mm. So, Voldemort Zelensky, three times now, has tried to go to Israel to, um, <clears throat> you know, show his support for Netanyahu and make sure that he's not forgotten in Kiev. Isn't he a Jew? Yeah. Okay. What? Three times. Three times, man. Fucking, man, go back 10 months ago 
And Zelensky was the man of the year on Time fucking magazine. Now yeah. he can't even, like, they won't even answer. Superstar. Like, Zelensky went trick or treating. Mm-hmm. Every house he went to, they'd fucking take the candy bowl out of the seat in the house, turn the lights out, pull the blinds. Oh, that's never cold. Even got any candy. That's so cold. Never even got any candy. Wow. And he dressed up as Anthony Blinken. <laughs> because Anthony Blinken's kids dressed up as him and his wife. You know, I mean, you would think there would be some uh, reciprocation. To be fair, to be fair, the little girl was supposed to be the Ukrainian flag. Okay. She wasn't supposed right. to be Zelenska or whatever the hell her name is. She was oh supposed to be the flag. All right. It was supposed to be Zelensky fucking the flag. All right. Same same thing he's doing to the country, just to the flag. It's symbolic. So Zelensky has been completely ghosted. Um, you know, pick your pundit. They're all in chorus. It's a it's a unanimous verdict now. Um, Ukraine has run out of males of fighting age. And uh, we've moved on. We've moved on. And as things completely go to shit in Gaza, bear in mind the ground invasion of Gaza is now more than 24 hours deep. And in that time, I've not seen any countries rushing to Israel's aid. Rather, the opposite. We've seen Bolivia once again completely break off all diplomatic ties with the state of Zion. The Colombian president, um, Gustavo Petro, uh, has recalled their envoys uh, and is considering breaking diplomatic ties and and had a a barnstorming speech uh, giving them down the road. Uh, The new, uh, what's her name in um, Santiago? Anyways, Chile, same thing. Mm-hmm. With Chile, um, I know that last night, um, Andres Chile. Manuel uh, Lopez Obrador, AMLO, mm-hmm. president of Mexico, was supposed to have a speech talking about this. I know pretty much where he already stands on this, so would not be surprised at all to see Mexico then follow suit and at the very least recall their uh, envoy an ambassador to the state of Israel for consultation, which is basically the, you know, the, the diplomatic, basically all your diplomats turning their back on a country. Like, mm-hmm. so the, the ground invasion of Gaza has already led to an accelerated further isolation of Israel. But of course mm. people may be wondering, what the fuck's going on with the United Nations? And of course, if you go back to the formation of the United Nations on John Davis and Rockefeller land, I will get back to writing that column. I've just been busy going back and forth. hospital. We'll hit that at the end. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, the British mandate was basically just thrown into the lap of the United Nations. I mean, at that point, you got hogging off fucking Israeli terrorists, um, you know, attacking the King David Hotel, killing British soldiers, rigging British soldiers' bodies with booby oh, yeah. traps. So I mean, it was all, food. it you was know? a setup and, from and the so beginning. And so at that point, the British are like, hot potato, hot potato. Here are you, yeah. and it's yours. It's yours. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what leads to the end of the British mandate and it being turned over to the UN to meet out what's going to happen between Israel and Zionist settlers and the native Arab population, which was at the time. Well, uh, it's funny that either, you mentioned uh, that. Christian or Jewish, because it turns out mm-hmm. Palestine has Christians, Palestine has Jews, and Palestine has Muslims, yet they're all Arabs. Right. And it turns out the Arabs in Palestine are like multi-secular, like they follow them mm-hmm. the same thing in Syria. So the, one of the most common tropes about the Mids East is that they've always hated each other. They've never been able to get along. That's not true. That is not true. 
We'll There's check been this out. long periods of peace with these different religious groups living next to each other. Shit just kind of goes haywire when the Holy Crusaders show up. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. And that's kind of been a repeating yeah. thing. And I just it has. view the Rothschild crusade as being a mm -hmm. long, grinding crusade and a forever war that guarantees bank profit. Well, and I can been. I can tell you, Yona, that it has been at least 106 years in the making because today... November 2nd is the 106th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration itself. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. And you go back to the um, Palestine Exploration Fund, PEF, and that was started in the city of London what did Richard say? It was 1842. Oh, yeah. It like, was, yeah, before the Civil War. <laughs> it, even. it predates the American Civil War, for Christ's sake. Yeah. So, um, just like the city <laughs> of Laredo. And so, worry not, investors on Wall Street at the New York Stock Exchange, as the outrage and the pearl clutching kicks in at long last. Um, and the flow of weapons has slowed to Ukraine. And the flow of weapons has slowed to Israel. You know, we can always tie one off mm -hmm. once again. And, and Taipei awaits. And we're still saber-rattling in the South China Sea around the Spratly Islands. And we're trying to get inroads back in with Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who's the new president of the Philippines. Because, you know, it really wasn't working now with uh, Rodrigo Duterte. So, um, you know, so, so, so bang, bang. there's a lot of international bang, bang. stuff going on here. Um, and with that, I think we can. Uh, can you hear it? Can you hear the noise of the trains? Is it that loud? No. Wah, wah. Nope. So it's not picking up the train. Well, anyway. No. The, we have a Norfolk Southern train screaming by. Mm. Um, That's all they do nowadays, isn't it? Go screaming by as fast yeah, it, as they it, can. It's tall and ass, it's and it like literally shit on my walls is fucking shaking. Wow. Um, no, and I'm dying to know what it is. Hang can't on, I just want to say This newfangled technology, it's pretty damn good. The, the track is on the other side of the apartment. I just want to see what's on this train. Hang on just a second. All right. Live radio, folks. Um, I don't think they would allow this in like just any interview. Um, but that's that's what we do here at Liberty Radio. Uh, we just do whatever the fuck we want, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, fuck and yeah. oh yeah, it's uh, it. I just caught the middle of the train with Canadian National Mid Power Units. And it's a Dilbit train. It's a bomb train. Same kind of train that um, was parked in Lac Magantique, Canada, and back rolled into town and exploded and took out about 15 city blocks and killed oh, nice. a people. What city I don't know was that? When that happened. Lac Magantique, just south of Montreal, Canada. Yeah. Dilbit, for those that are aren't uh, unaware, not not hip to the parlance there. Dilbit is a short for it's a concatenation for diluted bitumen because mm -hmm. in the north of Alberta uh, and it, again, sorry, some of you may not be aware that Alberta is one of the provinces of the Confederation of Canada. Um, it's like a state, but it's Canadian. It's complicated. Right. Anyway, so up there above Edmonton, Alberta, uh, in Calgary, it's California. like the real thing, but it's it's different. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> and their cops are on horses. <laughs> Mounties. <laughs> hey, what you doing there, eh? <laughs> you betcha, eh? <laughs> Bozer. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Fook around and right. find out. Right, so right, anyways, right, right. Um, right. up there in the north of Alberta, all my Canadian friends are going to kill me for this. Yep. But you, they, we, we've got what's called the Albertan tar sand. So they'll go and they'll like 
clear cut and strip all the timber off of like, I don't know, 2,000 acres. And then go in with these monster um, like steam shovels and remove the top soil and all the other material. Sometimes going 80 to 150 foot deep until they reach the bed of the tar sand. And then they can soup up the oil drippy tar sand and put it in these big boilers and it goes to the tar sand factory it's got all these smokestacks that are belching out black smoke uh and then it makes um carbon free green albertan dill bit diluted bitumen which is much more difficult to refine into crude oil and it's highly explosive hmm. so they don't like to move it in pipelines and so it's safer to just move it on railroad tracks oh yeah Put it on a train, send it into town, everything will be fine. Don't worry about it. Send it over the U.S. railroad network. What could go wrong? There's only seven derailments every day. Send it uh, it out to that hick town that we don't like so much. They They can figure out something to do with it. And so we basically have four railroads now operating. Uh, four class one railroads operating in the United States now because thanks to the latest merger between um, uh, Kansas uh, Kansas City and uh, Canadian Pacific, it's now CPKC. Uh, and then you've got BNSF, which is Burlington Northern Santa Fe, CSX, uh, and our favorite dioxin champions. Norfolk Southern, <laughs> no fuck yourself. So Norfolk, no fuck yourself. Uh, so um, uh, and Norfolk, Virginia. If you've not been there, um, don't just mm, don't don't. You know, there's Elizabeth City. There's Hampton Roads. Honestly, I would avoid all of that. Really, just go straight yeah. to Virginia Beach. Straight uh, to Virginia fact, Beach. Don't look around. Just yeah. keep. You keep your in eyes fact, forward. Go right up there by the end that's by Fort Story. Yeah. That's the yeah. best part of the beach. Mm. Right there. Right yeah. there. Right the Matter side. of fact, just go to North Carolina. It's it just go. Yeah. yeah, yeah just really. keep going. Kitty Hawk, you got the Wright brothers, yeah. it's the outer bank. Yep. Yeah. You got yeah. duck. You got yeah, all that yeah. stuff. Wait, because Virginia Beach is crowded and there's like needles in the sand and stuff. It, it's it's hey, not like it used to be. It's really get, gotten bad. We we've you know, really lost YouTube you like, now. Good thing there's there used to be shoot. nice places in downtown Richmond. Shout out now. Bitch there's shoot. no such thing. No Bump such me thing. up to the next tier, without making me pay for it, please. Oh, what? Oh. It, it's terrible. I mean, you can't even get an Airbnb in Richmond or Petersburg. It's so bad. You 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 know how bad a town is. When you can't even get an Airbnb there, that's bad. I mean, there's bumfuck places in the middle of goddamn nowhere all around the world where you can get a fucking Airbnb. And then you're looking and you're like, what the fuck? I can't get an Airbnb in Suffolk, Virginia? Like, what the fuck would you want to go to Suffolk? But anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Obviously, you're lost. So, moving on, Norfolk Southern. Um, you know, what's that one guy's name that's running for president? Um, Which one? V-fuck, V-fuck, uh, Ramaswamy or... Ramalaman? Ramaswamy. Yeah. Everybody yeah, should know I'm going to have trouble v- with V-fuck, that one. V-fuck Ramaswamy or something. Um, something like that. He's just another one of these stuck up mass hole uh Brahmin cast Indians like Clown Kamala Clown. and Nikki Haley. Yeah, Clown we call them kids. clowns. But they, not like they perform Dr. under Jesus, a big though. top. We call them clowns. I, I have to put Dr. Ayurdai Shiva in a whole different fucking category. <clears throat> Dr. Fuck. Dr. Fuck is yeah. the only guy that, like, will have you there. You know, you're Wait, why, why are we talking home. about parasites all of a sudden? Because I'm trying, this is my way of getting through Jerry Springer to the Cincinnati mayor's office. 
Okay. And it all ties into. Oh, you're going to make me play that your thing, aren't chain. you? Choo choose your supply chain. And so, anyways, yeah, it turns out Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Yes. So high. Jerry Springer used to be the mayor of Cincinnati. Um, but the current mayor of Cincinnati is. Aftab. Mayor of Cincinnati. Who cares about the mayor, mayor of Cincinnati? Cincinnati. Aftab Karma Singh Pudaval. What? <laughs> yeah, these fucking. Oh my god! Like, what? You remember Ajit Pai? Remember that one? Ajit with his Pai. monster fucking so, coffee cup, running the fucking FCC. Uh, He's the one that got rid of uh, Net Zero. Wait, he was. He was FCC. He was the federal communications. Yeah. Didn't he go FCC director? A Jeep pie. And he, he had yeah. this huge fucking coffee cup. Total fucking douche. Didn't he go to Google? Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So this is basically another um, Teco Meco Flaco guy. But anyway, so it turns out. This guy declared to run for the uh, Cincinnati mayor on January 14th. And he was elected at November of 2021 of that year and began serving as mayor on January 4th, 2022. As soon as he got in office, one of the first things he started uh, pushing for was to get a ballot issue before all residents of the city of Cincinnati to allow the city of Cincinnati to sell off their railroad. And now, as it turns out, Wait, it's well, hold be up. on the... Hold up. Why, they're why? voting on it next Tuesday. Why? Why would they do this? Why does this make any sense? Okay, well, it makes sense... When, you know, I, I, well, actually, I did kind of skip over something. <clears throat> the main story of tonight's Choo Choo's Your Supply Chain. Uh, we're talking about the Chitty Natty Chattanooga Railroad, you see. Um, Chitty Natty, a.k.a. Cincinnati. Um, WKRP in Cincinnati. Well, way back when. Oh, uh, Pull this thing up. Hang on. Let's see here. Cincinnati. Southern. Yeah, there it is. Oh, I still had the tab open. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, here's the tab. All right. That I should tell you right the there, screen, Dylan, but... how high the unit is. Yeah, man. Uh, so, the city of Cincinnati is the only municipality in the country to own an interstate railroad. An Ohio law enabling the creation of the Cincinnati Southern Railway was enacted on May the 4th, 1860 fucking nine. 1869. God damn. Cincinnati. Yeah. Cincinnati city voters then adopted a resolution designating Chattanooga as the southern terminus of the Cincinnati Railroad one month later. Workmen then spiked the last rail into place on December the 10th, 1879. The first freight train completed the route from Cincinnati to Chattanooga on February the 21st, 1880. The first passenger train then followed on March the 8th. The enterprise continues today under a long-term lease with the Cincinnati, New Orleans, and Texas Pacific Railway, the CNO and TP, generating revenue annually for capital infrastructure improvements and repair throughout the city of Cincinnati. Uh, and so to lease the railroad out, um, they make about 40 to $50 million a year in fees from the railroads that operate on the Cincinnati Southern Railway, because the city bought the property outright all the way to Chattanooga. They own it. 
the city what? then built wow. the fucking tracks. They own it. It is the largest single piece of publicly owned infrastructure in the entire United States of America. And Norfolk Southern wants to buy it. And so they well, put of course this they fucking do. puppet fuck into the mayor's office in Cincinnati. And from day one, he's been racing to get this ballot initiative because it requires, an, I think, an 80% majority of Cincinnati voters to allow the city to sell the, the railroad to Norfolk Southern for $1 billion, $1.6 mm. billion, which is basically about 35 years worth of fees that they've been paying. And, but, you know, Norfolk Southern will never have to pay them again. And Cincinnati will no longer have any control over the railroad that goes through their city. So Cincinnati has been in a unique position versus all any other city in the country, pretty much, that they could tell the railroad what to do because the railroad was using their tracks and their property right. and their permission under a lease. And they're the landlord. And so... In the midst of this, if we ever get our uh, funding appropriations bill, I guess it's being held hostage for more bombs for Ukraine and Israel. But whenever the funding bill finally goes through, oh, Israel is going to get is, their money. Don't worry about that. Oh, oh they're going to get their money yeah, because yeah, yeah. of all the dual citizens in Congress. Mm -hmm. um, out of 535 legislators, there's over 70 that are dual citizens or something ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's insane. Don't Ukrainian children will starve so that Israel can get their money. I can guarantee right. you that. And, and, you know, while they go to Congress and say, but the Arabs are saying death to all Jews. And then you go to their Twitter feed well, and they're literally tweeting well, nonstop death to all well, Arabs. So it's I mean, projection much? It's like the It's a little extreme, shadow. right? Yeah. All? Do, do they really mean all? Yes, yes. If you listen to the Lehigh dude, especially the the ninety eight yeah. year old general, yeah, mm -hmm. they 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 mean all. all I mean, them. literally, well. they're so unhinged with their turbo racism genocide fest that Wolf fucking Blitzer on CNN wearing his sous chef um cooking outfit, and he, you know, granted for those that don't remember. Wolf fucking Blitzer used to be the spokesperson for APAC. American, Israeli, political mm -hmm. activist. Used to write for the fucking Jerusalem Post in Israel. Right? So, I mean, last guy you would expect to be, you know. Anyways, so he's just having a run-of-the-mill talk with the Israeli Defense Force spokesman about their bombing and leveling of the Jabalia refugee camp. Wolf Blitzer's like, what? You just killed like 3,000 people in one bomb. Most of them were women and children, but why? Why? Well, there, there was one Hamas commander in there. Mm. Well, 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 did you kill him? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, yes, sir. Well, we can confirm, but yes, yes, we can confirm that we killed him. And then you killed all those other people, too. Well, you know, the war is a, the, the war is a messy. I'm sorry, I can't hear you anymore. I can't hear you anymore. And then, literally, Wolf Blitzer looks down and looks away. I mean, it's like he's literally staring into the gates of hell. And he's like, I don't want to die in hell. So, mm. I don't know. It's like, you never expect a, a hologram meat fuck puppet to all of a sudden grow a fucking conscience. But Share it was so emotion. hideous. It was so hideous and over the top. I'm sorry, you huh. said what? You said what? I can't hear anything else you're saying, man. Let's go on to the next subject. Wow. Well, you know, next subject. Even Piers Morgan. Even Piers Morgan. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, long story short, to wrap up the Norfolk Southern thing, mm -hmm. Norfolk Southern has basically spent millions to get um, their puppet mayor in to the mayor's office in Cincinnati for the single purpose so they can get ownership That's right. of we the have Cincinnati a to Chattanooga Railroad. We do so, fancy you know, shit here. It's ironic to me that the two most successful 
enterprises in this entire part of the country are the internet in Chattanooga, which is owned by the city of Chattanooga, right? The entire internet all across Chattanooga is municipal internet. It's a public service. It's a public utility. In most communities, you don't get your internet from the county or the city. Right. You're getting it you get from it a from an ISP. Private, a private internet service provider. Correct. And you're paying out the ass for substandard service. and. In many service. cases, yes. Yeah. Just like I am right now. Yeah. Shout See, out there you Sparklight. Go. Case in point. Case in point. Example given. Um, and so, so that's where it stands. Uh, and I really think that Norfolk Southern is just doing the bidding of the other railroads. And with the four class one railroads to, to finish tonight's choo choose your supply chain, you know, bear in mind, China is the main ownership holder. They, they hold the largest ownership interest in BNSF, uh, and in UP uh, union Pacific. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense, considering the Chinese literally built the Western railroads, that they they, they own them. Sorry, I had Wait. to handle something in the chat. It's crazy. Private, private ownership of the railroads has been a disaster. And so, mm. the one good success story where the railroad is not privately owned, but actually owned by the citizens of Cincinnati, why would you ever sell that railroad when it's making you $50 million a year? It, it makes so much money for the city of Cincinnati every year that it pays for all of their road maintenance, all of their bus programs, and everything, and they still have money left over every year. I just, and I, then they get this, why would you they get, get rid of it to begin like, with? Hey, we've why? got this great golden goose that keeps laying these golden eggs. I just got into the office here. First thing I want to do, let's let's kill that. Let's gut that fucking golden goose that's been shitting golden eggs since 1860 fucking nine. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's it for the train story. I had two more. Well, train were, were were we gonna play the clip? Or oh oh yeah, I sent you a clip. Didn't yeah, you? yeah. Like right, you won't. Yeah, right. You'll be able to hear it. You won't see it. But let's see. Let, let's fill people in here. It, it, it's pissing me off now. Because, okay. you know, Norfolk Southern, haven't you fucked Ohio hard enough with the dioxin and the whole East Palestine uh, thing? No, no. There's there's always more. There is. This, this is just here down. Seen the ads. $600,000 worth just on TV with Cincinnati's mayor Sorry. asking you to vote to sell the railroad. Norfolk Southern wants to buy it. It would be in a huge lump sum for money for the city, but selling it means the city loses an asset, and you have to trust those in charge to spend the money wisely. So all of this prompted WCPO 9's I-Team reporter Dan Monk to dig into who's paying for these ads, why the mayor is the face of the campaign, and if all of this is on the up and up. We can build Cincinnati's future. Cincinnati Mayor Aftab Bureval is the face of a campaign to sell the Cincinnati Southern Railway to Norfolk Southern, but he isn't the conductor. I'm not uh, directly involved in the campaign. In a one-hour interview, Bureval said he didn't know the details about polling. I'm, I'm told, though, that it, it, it's going to be close. Or campaign finance. Who's paying for the campaign? Yeah, the campaign is largely funded by Norfolk Southern. How much are they spending? I don't know. Fix city roads. He also didn't know the campaign is being run by the treasurer of his re-election campaign. The campaign is run by Jens Suttmuller. And uh, he is the treasurer of that campaign and also the treasurer of your campaign. Your... No, he's not. He's not my he's not my uh, treasurer. A campaign finance report from July says otherwise. Dan, I apologize. Uh, Jens is is listed as my treasurer um, on that on that campaign finance report. Um, previously, uh, very recently, Evan Nolan was my treasurer. Um, it transitioned over to Jens. But but let me be clear about this. Let, let me let me answer. That's your question. funny. Jens is my Jens is my treasurer. I've worked with him on previous elections. Uh, I've worked with him on uh, my congressional race. 
um, and he has been supportive of me throughout my campaigns. It was Norfolk Southerns um, and, uh, and uh, some other folks who were uh, asking about you know, who's a, who's a person who would be uh, well positioned to run a campaign, um, and Jens's name came up. I had no part in deciding who would run the campaign, no influence about that. I'm complete, completely separate from that. So it might basically, not be against the law, but it certainly doesn't pass the smell test. Former Cincinnati Vice Mayor Christopher Smitherman opposes the railroad sale and says he might run for mayor in 2025. That it is an absolute conflict of interest for his for the treasurer to be involved with this campaign. Oh, you and think? I would take the next step. I think it's a conflict of interest for the mayor himself to be involved in a campaign. Like <gasps> this. Do you see any conflict of interest yeah, there I, for him to be heavily involved in your campaign and the rail campaign? I, I don't, only because you know I've been very very clear and upfront about my support of the rail sale. Um, I am I. Personally, I'm getting no um, benefit from this. Bullshit. Um, Norfolk Southern Bullshit. is not a supporter of mine, is not a donor of mine. I'm, I'm, Bullshit. Uh, uh, Bullshit. No Show the receipt. Uh, yeah. Show the receipt. Uh, uh, we just go uh, back uh, like two Thomas. minutes. Um, I am in this specifically because I believe <sighs> no. it's in the best interest of the city. I'm sure he doesn't get paid by the railroad, but they are paying for TV ads that the mayor appears in, and that's... That's a lot of uh, good publicity for the mayor, who's probably going to be running here in another year or so. Rail yeah, sale sure critic it's Todd Zinzer is a former inspector finance. general for the Commerce Department. Yep. The question that remains spot. is whether the mayor has a sufficient arm's length relationship with Norfolk Southern. And just the appearance of his campaign treasurer mm. being, the cam being the campaign treasurer for Norfolk Southern really has to raise red flags to the voters and have them wonder whether we're really getting an objective proposal from the uh, from the mayor. And deliver for every neighborhood. Sutmuller declined to be interviewed, but answered questions via email. He said the PAC's attorney has affirmed that my role as treasurer and the participation of elected officials in ads supporting Issue 22 are entirely within the confines of the law, pose no conflicts of interest, and do not cross any ethical boundaries. Dan Monk, WCPO 9, IT. I'm I'm sorry. What'd you say? Uh, he said we investigated Jensen? ourselves and we found that we didn't do anything wrong. I, I remember when Ronald yeah. Reagan said that about a Ron Contra affair. Yeah. Uh, Ollie North, we, Ollie North, Jensen, told the truth to Congress. Into this and I believe he found, even shed a tear, if I'm not mistaken. I would like to apologize to the American people tonight. Yeah. Yeah. He had to take one for the Gipper that night. And uh, Ollie North had to plead guilty to a felony, as did... Um, he had to take it. But, uh, but you know, he did get a contract with Fox News later on, so it worked yep, out. Yep, yep. It worked out. Nice radio <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ollie North telling <laughs> Americans how to think. Fail your way to the top, America. So, <laughs> definitely nothing Fail forward. MK Ultra about that. Nothing at all. Don't pay it forward. Fail it forward. Yep. Fail it forward. Yep. There you go. Yep, yep, yep. And, and, you know, when I first heard this story and they kept saying yens, 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 mm -hmm. I kept thinking they were talking about yens like yens going shopping or right i was like are home? they in pittsburgh what's going on <laughs> but i had remembered cincinnati and and apparently yen stuttmuller is totally an immigrant lawyer um it's weird all these immigrants involved in this cincinnati story with norfolk southern mm -hmm. but you have to realize that the, now that we've gone from over 100 Class 1 railroads and 150,000 rail miles to about 60,000 rail miles left, as they've continued to just um, pick apart the rotting carcass of the American Rail Network, and we've gone from 145,000 miles to 60,000 miles of track left. Anyway, unfucking real, man. That's more than un half. Unfucking real. Yeah, that's more than half. And we've gone from over 100 like that's class serious. Just 
four Monopoly. Just four Monopoly. But the last thing, I, I, I said I was going to skip it, but I, I, I just can't skip it. Okay. Amtrak had a board meeting last week. Right. And they unveiled their brand new connecting U.S. Amtrak expansion map, uh, which is for Amtrak 2030, which coincides with Gay Zero 2030. Um, so the Gay Zero Railroad Network expanded service from Amtrak will now extend the Texas Eagle, which goes from Chicago through St. Louis, through Little Rock, through Texarkana, down to Marshall, Texas, right off Interstate 20 and US 80. Where's that? And then it runs along I 20. How far right from Dallas. Jasper is that? Jasper? Yeah. Uh, is Jasper on the 59? I don't. 59, maybe. Right. Sounds familiar. I think it is. Just, uh, it's a little bit southeast of Tyler. Yeah, yeah, it's it's right off this rail line that I'm talking about. Oh wow! Um, let me see. Uh, the I, Texas I, Eagle is the Amtrak route that ooh, serves. I Dallas. have a knack for picking picking places to live, huh? Um, and so yeah. Marshall, Marshall is is actually pretty far. In, wow, you're way far south. Jesus Christ, you're like literally what in fucking. You're right by the Kohutta tribe and the Kohutta Indian Reservation. Is that good? All the way down. Yeah, yeah. That's that's fine, man. You're down in, you're literally in the Sabine River Valley. Um, Yeah. uh, But you can actually get on the train at Beaumont um, just to the south there. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, you know, there there are, that's the French part of Texas, the Cajun part there. (laughs) Um, And if you've never had the Cajun uh... peanuts, and yeah. Drizzle now knows, but we don't talk that about don't, that uh, out in public. You've never had the case, by the way. Peanuts, yeah, no. you do. yeah, we don't. Oh, oh. We don't talk yeah, about yeah, that in public. Yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah. some people have gastrointestinal issues. Mm. It's not for everybody. No, but anyways, definitely uh, not. The Texas Eagle currently ends in Bayhar County or Bexar, for those that don't say it right, San Antonio. Um, where it then joins with the uh, train going out west, the Sunset Limited, which goes to Los Angeles. So last, what was it, last Thursday? So a week ago at the uh, latest, greatest Amtrak board meeting, they are now extending the Texas Eagle uh, down from San Antonio through Laredo to Monterey, and then Saltillo, Mexico. Really? Amtrak is proposing mm. international railroad travel back into Mexico. Now, Amtrak did, in fact, offer trains into Mexico before, but the Transamerican, which followed that route previously from San Antonio through Laredo to Monterey, the trans the Transamerican, I think, quit in... 84, 85, I Hmm. guess I could look it up. But it's been, you know, 25 years at least since Amtrak offered any rail service to Mexico. On the other hand, Amtrak has never stopped offering rail service to Canada. And currently, you can take the Cascades train from Seattle up to Vancouver, British Columbia. You can take a train from... Uh, New York to Toronto by way of Buffalo, New York. And they finally reestablished the Montreal train that goes from New York uh, to Montreal going up alongside Lake Champlain. So there's one, two, three Amtrak lines that go into Canada. And soon there may actually be Amtrak service. Hmm. Back into Mexico. You're um, talking Monterey in Nuevo Leon? That's right. And then uh, one further stop proposed on their map uh, was Saltillo, which is... Just to the southwest. 
Yeah, Salt. I'm trying to think uh, what state that is. Oh, it's Saltillo. Uh, is Saltillo a state? Might be. I don't know. Uh, I I drove oh, through Saltillo it. Saltillo is the capital of Coahuila. Yeah, I definitely That's drove Coahuila. through it. Yeah, Coahuila, Saltillo. For this yeah. up here for because I mean basically Saltillo is right next to Monterey. It's right next to Monterey, like literally maybe an hour's drive to the west. Uh, oh, but yeah, just a little bit. What is that about? Two hours, three hours, three hours from Laredo to Monterey. Um. Oh, you, you can see Saltillo. I think. A little bit. You can more see than Saltillo that. on that map. There, it's just right to the, mm -hmm. just to the left and below Monterey. There, Saltillo. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think I think I drove through there. Yeah. Yeah, that's the main drag cutting across. Just whatever. The let's see what. Eighty-five. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I believe that's the federal that's like a toll highway. Road freeway yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the federal highway. Yeah. There's only one in Mexico. One federal highway goes all over Mexico. Yep. So they're expanding rail service. And of course, on that same Amtrak map, they show expanded rail service hubbing out of Cincinnati. Hmm. Because Amtrak expected, well, it should be no problem to run passenger trains out of Cincinnati because the city of Cincinnati owns the, the right-of-way and the trackage. But if Norfolk Southern gets their way with their puppet mayor that they put in office and they manage to steal the deed to the Cincinnati and Chattanooga Railroad, well, uh, that, that pretty much fucks up any rail service hmm. going south out of Cincinnati on that line. They would have to use the CSX line, which they are proposing to use the CSX line to have a train going from Cleveland through Columbus, through Cincinnati, down to Louisville, and on down to Nashville, and then dead end. And then they'd have another train that would just pick up in Chattanooga and go to Atlanta and on down to Florida. And I'm like, why wouldn't you just run a train from Cincinnati on down to Chattanooga? And that way you could have a continuous train from Cleveland all the way to Florida. Mm. That would make a lot more fucking sense than to have two dead end trains and then just fuck Kentucky and Tennessee yet again yeah. with no fucking connecting train. Well, I mean, you know, it's hillbilly country, right? Can't give them anything. Can't give those you know, people anything. That's my whole, my last comment on that thing is their 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 map is just all these dead end lines, mm -hmm. and it would just make so much more sense to me. And if you're trying to do a, a network, to at least connect to other lines, so that you can then you know if you want to go the other way, you can go up here and then catch that train and go the other way. I mean, instead of all these dead end lines, it just Okay, I'm done with railroads. Okay, that was all right. Two so how about like, how about it's pathetic. How about we talk about something um, with a little bit more of a positive spin to it, right? Because there's all this nasty stuff happening in the world, all this bad shit going on. Well, when you talk about positive spin, you can't be talking about hurricanes. No, 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 no. That's okay. not what oh, I'm talking thank about. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Please, please. No, that's we negative. Did Israel, we that's did negative. Counterclockwise. Right. It's getting really, it's getting really heavy. Right. All Who right. So, okay. uh, there were many anniversaries that occurred this week. Maybe this one slipped under your radar on Tuesday, which of course was Halloween in the Western world and even in some non-Western places. It was also the 15 year birthday of Bitcoin. The Bitcoin white paper was originally published on October 31st, 2008. 
Well, I got to do a shout out to Satoshi Nakamoto and yes, sir, the Bitcoin's loudest cheerleader on planet fucking Earth, Max motherfucking yep. Kaiser. What up, Max? And you too, Stacy Herbert. Okay. Yep. Happy to come to uh, El Salvador anytime you guys want to host us. Absolutely. We'll hang out. We'll talk Bitcoin. You guys can give us some Bitcoin. We'll do some shows. It'll be awesome. And, and I make a great crudite and, and Drizzle's the one for the dip. And, sure. and for those Whatever. who don't know about don't know. crudite, crudite is just, you know, very cleaned up, chopped up pieces of, you know, carrot and celery and cucumber and everything. And Is that what it is? I mean, you, yeah, you could call it like, you know, fresh vegetable tray, but um, that's if you're hoi polloi. It's crudite. Anyway. That's right. It's, it's an right. LDL. We have a class here that's right. on Get Fact Harder. Panache. Panache. So, um, but yeah, 15 years <laughs> of Bitcoin. Wow. And it's So when been... are we getting that uh, Fed coin, that, that, um, oh, we CD. already have it. It's already in play, right? <clears throat> I don't know if it's necessary necessarily in play yet, but it's it's already done. They're just waiting to roll it out, just like most of the other central banks already have their digital currency figured out. You know, Lagarde herself said October of this year, 2023, is basically going to be go time. That's that's well, when we start implementing all, stuff. It's actually going to get better. You know, I I was kind of I had some doubt. I was wondering about the markets and everything, but then I caught this interview of Janet Yellen, where she was asked, you know, does the Treasury have enough money and financial strength right now to support? Um, Ukraine and Israel, yes. and, you know, basically fight a war yes. on two fronts. Oh, yeah. No question. Fuck, we're good, man. We're good. Yep. Let her rip. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. Oh, <sighs> big sigh of relief. Okay. <clears throat> we're good. Money printer go burr. Yeah. Inflation, good. Wow. Like my son just is a, my son Kai Soda. He is something about the damned McDonald's Chicky McNuggets. I hate McDonald's and I hate that he loves it, but I just want you know he loves. He, anyways, he loves the McDonald's chicken nuggets. It, it just tickles him to no end when I get him those damn chicken nuggets. Yeah, and uh, it's something they did it to all children. You know, don't feel bad. It's not like it's just him. It's all children. Gave, I never gave him McDonald's. It was all the other. I know. It was the other assholes. Now, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. And so, anyways, it, it just literally brings tears to his eyes when he sees the McDonald's bag with his chicken McNuggets, and he just wolfs them down. Uh, and so, you know... It gets me that, like, you know, because where I do DoorDash and Uber is my main uh, income earning thing. Uh, well, you know, I do make money from selling songs and records and playing live and stuff, too. But, you know, my, I earn my real bread from, at this point, DoorDash because Uber's, I don't really have anything good to say about Uber. So Yeah, a bunch of dickheads Dash, from what I heard. Yeah, they, they, they fucked me so hard. So, um. And no lube, not even courtesy spit. So wow, with DoorDash, that's harsh. It's cool because I'm getting to see the prices of the food and drink and meals and entrees at literally every single fucking restaurant every single day. And then when I'm doing Uber and I have Uber riders and there's conversation back and forth. So you know, it's really a with the jobs that I'm working now, I'm I'm able to learn so much about how much everything costs. I'm out and about every day. I'm talking to people off the street constantly in my van. 
And plus, I get to try out my music on the <laughs> captive audience. Mm. Uh, uh, and and they always, plus. you know, like whenever I play them songs, they're like, you know, I really like your piano playing, and I like that guy singing. And it's like kind of like, like yeah, thanks. And I, I always want to tell Dead Fella because Dead Fella's like, man, I don't really like your singing. And I, I got to tell him again, man. Dead Fella, man. Mm. They always like it when you sing. Mm -hmm. And then after they hear me sing, they're like, well, I like your piano. Yeah. Just being nice. Because instead of saying, I don't, I, I, I don't know about your singing, but the piano's all right. Hey, well, whatever. I'll take, what, you know, I'll take every compliment, however I can get it. And really, I don't give a fuck. I'm high all the time anyway. But right. the, the point being, the, like, if you want an actual non-GMO, nutritious, healthy meal, somewhat like at the Panera bread with the fucking brioche bread and the artisan fucking soup and everything non-GMO and cage-free fucking free-range chicken meat and all this shit, and you look at the price of the actual meal, it's like 12 bucks for just one person's meal. You're like, God damn, that's, that's crazy. That is crazy. And, that's too much. And then much. you go to McDonald's. And then you go to McDonald's. And the dude in front of you is getting a Big Mac with French fry and a drink and a shake for dessert. And it's 15 fucking dollars. And I'm like, God damn. You're better off to go to Panera or Chili's or fucking Olive Garden and sit down and spend 15 bucks and eat something there than go to fucking McDonald's or Taco Bell. And again, can you even do that at Olive Garden anymore? I don't know if you can. I don't well, think I you wouldn't can. recommend Olive Garden because their food is mainly made oh, But they're you, ubiquitous. They're just but fucking everywhere, more like, like lice. $30. At least twenty-five to thirty dollars at Olive Garden. Probably about twenty dollars at Chili's. But mm. you know, the the what, what's incredible to me is what used to be considered by most in America to be the cheaper places to eat, like Wendy's, McDonald's, Taco Bell. In comparison to, you know, old Charlie's or TGI oh, Fridays so or Charlie's. Ruby Tuesdays or Chili's or someplace like that, you expect to pay more at a place like that than if you're mm. just going to the drive through at McDonald's, generally speaking, right? Right. That's no longer the case. That's, that's, uh, I just brought this point up to make that point. I've noticed in the field that for some strange hmm. reason, it's now cheaper. To eat at the Ruby Tuesdays and the TGI Fridays than it is to eat from the drive through at the Taco Bell mm. or the McDonald's. They've gotten rid of the value menus pretty much. And yeah, you know, like there used to be a dollar menu at Wendy's, they, they don't have it anymore. They don't have no. a dollar menu anymore. Not at Wendy's. What? No. There's no more dollar menus. What the hell? Hell, 50 cent isn't even 50 cent anymore. He goes as a buck 50 now. Fucking inflation, man. I can't even afford his prices at the candy shop. All right. All right. Well, we are almost 15 minutes to the top of the midnight hour, Yona. So you know what that means. It's time to, to explain what these things are on my arm. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly, that is exactly, ding, ding, winner, winner. That is exactly what time it is. So, when, when what are those things hospital, on your arm? Uh, when you have a baby in the hospital, they give you one of these. Uh, because they put one around the, the leg of the baby, and then they put one around you, and then they put one around mommy. But as you can see, there are two of them. Right. Uh, because we had twins, of course, and that would be uh, the first one to come out was Jacob Wallace. I'm sorry, Jonah Wallace. Uh, Jonah was first. No, 
Jacob Taywall was first. Gotcha. Jonah Wolosky was second. Because Jacob never had to go on the thing in the nose. Whereas Jonah, the second one to come out, he had to catch up. But ne- they, they are now both. Well, maybe he just back. wanted the he nose was- candy. Yeah. You know, don't don't assume. And they're so fuzzy. Like I, I think I did send pictures to you. Somewhere. Maybe I'm stored somewhere. I've got them on my phone. I could send them again, but uh, I'll just wait until I get better pictures because they're where they still got the tape on them and they're still in the NICU. And oh, hopefully, yeah, within yeah. the next two or three days, we'll finally get yeah. them home because the whole issue was when the babies are born, they lose weight. It takes them a while to get their footing and to start suckling and to start gaining weight. But in the meantime, as that time transpires from birth to, you know, a couple days in, a lot of times, it, you know, that, that's the scariest time for me as a dad now with my seventh and eighth child is because their their weight drops so much. And then you're like, mm. come on. It's like, it's like a plane that's about to crash. And you're like, Pull it and up, pull the nut, pull up, pull up, pull yeah. up. Come on, come on, come on. And then finally, they stop losing weight. And then and they push out the last of the meconium green looking tar poop. And then they and you finally get to the brown, creamy peanut butter milk poop. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, after so many kids, I, I can tell you, not all poop is the same. Yeah. All for entertainment happens. purposes only, folks. Liberty Radio is for entertainment purposes only. Because poop. Because poop. Shit happens. Um, now, there was one other thing. Well, <clears throat> I'll just leave it at this. You know, the one thing I did look into before coming to air, I was looking at Jeff Berwick's um, charity that he's doing, because, of course, Jeff's down there still in Guerrero State, um, just outside of town there. But uh, And I looked at two others, and I, not, I just didn't have enough. Didn't really feel good. I would want to vet a little bit more rigorously some of these uh, charities, because I don't want to plug a charity or a website and people go there to help people in Acapulco and right. then get ripped off <clears throat> then it makes me look like a jackass um, but, I mean uh, I would my advice to anyone if they were looking for advice on the situation is allow a little bit of time to shake out so you can kind of figure out feel out what the different charity organizations are all about. Spend your t- some time, do your research on them, do your due diligence, and after you get through that, if you still feel like they're legit, then go ahead and pull the trigger. Because here's I, the I thing. It's going to take time for any, any of those call. funds to get to the people who actually need them. So... I- no, I am Do gonna your go out part, on the right? With this. Make sure that it's actually going to get to them, and not gonna be like three percent goes to the people who really need it, and ninety-seven percent goes to the fucking Red Cross so that they can smuggle drugs and children and weapons and shit. And administrative costs and child trafficking. And right. So yeah, that's why well, I say. How did we get there from talking about your Red kids? Cross. I don't understand what happened there. Oh, because before before I came to air, I was trying to find the baby pictures. And then I realized my phone was outside. But then I went back to try to vet the charities for Acapulco. And I finally just said, fuck it. Uh, because the ones that kept coming up was like, yeah, I'm not even going to name their names because you know who they are. Yeah. And it because it's. What's her name? Was it Naomi Klein talking about disaster capitalism? And every time there's a disaster, the fucking Wall Street vultures swoop in to gobble up the donation money and to scam people yeah. and everything. 
that's not my take with Jeff Berwick. So, I mean, if you're familiar with Jeff Berwick and the stuff they do with the Narco Poco, I mean, they, they, there's a huge expat community down there. Um, as you would know. Um, uh, but I, I feel like Jeff was really focusing on getting aid to everyone. Um, that would be, you know, my main thing. Help to get to everyone that needs it, not just those that speak uh, the English. Right. Uh, now, as for the babies, um, for those that uh, are uh, donationally inclined, we are a values for value system here. That's right. At Grand Theft World Liberty Radio, and after much traveling and travails, uh, we have managed to fight our way back onto the internet in this ever increasing censorship and fuckery going on. I I have noticed what they've been doing to your streams, Brian yeah. Christian, there at the Last American Vagabond. Oh, there has uh, been and the an increase in fuckery. Yeah, and then wow. Rumble's been having outages. Rumble's just oh, Rumble's just shit, shit to begin with. Come on, shout out Rumble. Well, Honestly, of all the uh, platforms that I've used, that, you know, with all sincerity and honesty, I found that the replays on Odyssey had the best overall sound quality and the best overall video quality. However, with Rumble, as soon as my Rumble feed is done, within seconds, you can go back and watch the Rumble feed. With hmm. its okay sound and its decent video, whereas hmm. with the audit with the Odyssey hmm. superior sound and video, when the thing is done, you can't just go immediately and watch it on playback. It takes a couple hours, like maybe six to eight hours. I don't know. It takes a little while with Odyssey for it to be put up on replay. Yeah. Well, usually um, it's ready like replay, the next morning. Yeah. It it's safe. It's safe, and, and I feel like this is a, a free speech platform uh, that doesn't have a funky shit lib smell, and it doesn't have a funky MAGA chud smell. Right. It seems like a mutual, neutral space for bona fide free speech. Yeah. Uh, and I, I actually... It's what YouTube should I, have been. Whenever I've uh, simulcast from YouTube and... Uh, Rumble and Odyssey on some of my Hyona with the lower cast streams. I was um, I was amazed to see that I had as many, if not more, viewers every time on Odyssey than on Rumble. Hmm. Uh, and you know, because I had thought that Odyssey was really out there, and that there just really weren't that many people messing with Odyssey. But like with last no, America, there back, are. There's more people on Odyssey than Rockfin. Yeah. There's way more people on Odyssey than Rockfin. Yeah. Rockfin is actually the most tight, exclusive little thing. And that's kind of ironic to me, considering their whole model is based upon premium content and restricting who can even be on their platform. And they have the absolute smallest audience and a shrinking audience. And so I... Mm -hmm. I I love Rockfin and all the chats and groups on there, but I just don't know. I just don't know how it's being it's squeezed work. out. You think? Well, just because it just has such a limited reach, mm -hmm. that the, the crowds are so tiny on there, which is cool. It's very intimate, and you have these great interactions and chat on there. But I mean. Then all of a sudden, you go to a stream on Odyssey or on YouTube or on DLive or anywhere else. And, you know, instead of maybe 100 or, wow, there's 180 people watching this. And all of a sudden, it's like hundreds and thousands of people. And it's like, wow, that's very intimate on Rock Fan. It's, it's in such a tiny crowd. Um, it's, just, it's, it's a club. It's, cool. it's a club. It's cool. That's what it is. It's a club. 
Uh, and you know, I've been confronted in a couple of emails here. I, I wasn't sure whether or not to address this mm. or not, but I've been confronted about, you know, with I, with everything that I know and all these solutions and everything that I should do more, that I should put out leaflets, that I should hit the ground again. And, you know, I did all that shit before with Occupy Wall Street. It may come to that point again, but I don't think we're there. What are you going to do much, it for? That's the thing. As much suffering and pain as there is, I just don't see what that would accomplish. I mean, I, I kind of figured out during Occupy Wall Street as the communicator spoke and doing all those general assemblies that, you know, you can put all the information there. You can lead the sheeple off the death chute. You can lead the sheeple over to thought, but you can't make them think. You can lead the horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I mean, some of these people, it, you just have to figure it out in your own way at your own pace. And I mean, yeah. some people, when you try to tug them along, they just get even more resistant to pull away. I mean, because, you know, it's easier to fool people than to convince people that they've been fooled already, right? Correct. Mark Twain said that. Yeah, and, and it's... Again, I don't view this joint venture that we're involved with, this greater Grand Theft World concept, as a lifeboat service where we're going around the Titanic and plucking people out of the water. I don't view it as a lifeboat. I would view the Grand Theft World people as being the ones who are actually climbed up and dropped the fucking lifeboat down finally because everyone on the ship was shit in their pants. Yeah. And so, you know, Drizzle yeah. and Yona are like, hey, everybody follow us. We're going to get this boat into the water. And then Rich and Tony go to another boat. We're going to get this boat into the water. We're not going down with this ship. It's called autonomy. Check it out at Gore.com. Hmm. Trying not to anyway, but we'll see what happens. I mean, they're going to take a lot of things out. That's... um I don't think that's a question anymore. There's a lot of things that we have today that we're probably not going to have five, six, seven, eight years from now. Uh, that's just things that we have to adapt to and adjust to as we yeah, continue on the ride uh, well, all I, the I way like to 2030. The American collective consciousness has finally reached the bottom and I feel like it's starting to come up and the reason why I say that mm -hmm. is because of even idiots like Piers Morgan and Wolf Blitzer being just disgusted by just the obscene racism and genocidal uh, chutzpah of the Zionists that it's, it's just really it's, again so many things that I thought what I would just never see. Yeah. Like my in-laws are evangelical Christians. They've always supported Israel. No matter what. Just repeating the Ralph Reed Christian right, you know, Christian coalition crap from going all the way back when they were papering church pews running against Clinton in 92. Um, and all of a sudden they said, well, they, you know, they're just doing too much. I can't support Israel. Well, and, and again, they had gotten every single shot. I think both of them, both of mine, hmm. and mother in law and father both have had three of them. But they're not getting a fourth or a fifth one. Well, it's... if it didn't work after the third time, I'm not doing it anymore. And and they were the ones that were the hardest on me for not getting my children stuck with needles every week. Because right. I don't, I don't view my children as voodoo doll pin cushions. You know, it's it's definitely caused some interesting divisions among people. We are less than 60 seconds from the top of the hour, Yona. Uh, well, it's time to cut out of here. The good news is yeah. people are starting to think for themselves. And I to respond to the emails, that's why I'm back on the air with Drizzle. We're going to be cranking out more content. We're, we're, we're Voltroning once again because we are making a difference. Public opinion has changed. More and more people are grappling with reality and disconnecting from the fantasy because the fantasy ride has just become a fucking hell ride. Too much of a hell hmm. ride. 
and people are just being shook to their senses, whether it's the carpet bombing of Gaza, the mandates at work, the poisoning of our food, you know, um, these are all positive things. And so we're going to keep putting out more content because we don't have to go find people, Drizzy. They're finding us. Just look, look, oh, yeah? look, look at the hits on the website. Look, look at the increasing. I mean, I've not done hardly any promotion. And I'll, I, I try to do more promotion, but people are yeah. finding us. All right, you know, cool. We tell the truth. We spread the truth. It's what Grand Theft World's all about, and people are finding us. All right, I'll take your word for it. We got to get out of here. So, uh, last word. Absolute last word. Love you all.